So, uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, we're Ytalk. Um, we are uh, an independent open data consulting <laughs> team. Um, there was discussion earlier about the rapid catch up of uh, cities around the world and uh, countries around the world in open data. And uh, our team's off next week to Tanzania to work with the World Bank on a one year project to turn the entire Tanzanian government onto open data. Um, so, there is a lot of easy gains in open data that have already been made um, in the UK and it now gets incrementally harder uh, and exponentially harder the further we go down this, this route now. It's very easy at a national level to catch up. Um, it's really easy to, for, a, for a, a national government to say we own these data sets, they're in head office um, and we can easily publish. As soon as you now need to distribute that out to the cities and you need to go local, it gets really, really hard because there are multiple different competing interests, there are multiple reasons that data are collected, and there are multiple different incompatible data sets. Okay? So we look at the question of, uh, of why cities collect data. Sorry, I'm trying to remove this mouse. Um, this is a, a corner in, uh, in my city of Oxford. Um, which is an empty shop. Um, and often we're trying to solve questions like joblessness, homelessness, traffic problems. Uh, Bristol's doing energy use as a, as a, as a major focal area. Um, this particular empty shop has been empty a very long time. About six years ago, uh, this entire site was redeveloped and a new grocery store was put in there, one of the big chains. The uh, end corner point is still empty. It has been continuously empty for 10 years um, in Oxford, in the center of Oxford. But if we look at how open data are being used, we can see that it has been well integrated into commercial offerings already. You know, find me some way to live. Well, that's great because we can go and use projects and, uh, and products like Zoopla or Rightmove, and they have well integrated open data into it. Uh, housing prices, um, we can have a look and see exactly everything we want to. This is Sunderland, which is an area we're looking to work in. Um, and I can find out all sorts of inf information. This is one data set we're looking at. It's just house prices coming out of, uh, out of the, the national statistics. One data set, I can get historical values, I can see comparative, I can see price trends, I can see all sorts of stuff there. It's fantastic if I'm a residential uh, person looking for a new home. Um, even better, because of the, uh, the census information that's been released, I can find out what my neighbors are going to be like. You know, do they read the same papers as me? Because you know, obviously if they don't, then there'd be nothing to talk about. <laughs> and this has been fantastic for residents. It hasn't necessarily helped you if you've been in business. Because if I want to find somewhere to invest, that isn't the stock exchange, okay? That is that empty shop that I showed you, then the data are thin on the ground because that sort of data is owned by the local authority, okay? It's owned by the city. Um, and yet, as been mentioned earlier, um, that the city is, is reluctant to release or doesn't know how or doesn't have the capacity um, or doesn't have the experience of doing so. And that, because of that, as Rick mentioned earlier, I will choose the easiest place for me to invest, which is London. That's why business comes here first, because it is the easiest place to go, because it is the minimum risk. Okay? And if I look, um, Zoopla has a new API that allows you to have a look at commercial space that's available. We're told that 10 to 20% of shops are empty. And that that number gets really, really bad the further north you go in the UK. If so much space is empty, where is it? It isn't listed. And we have gotten to a point now where it becomes a bit like unemployment. When unemployment becomes completely difficult to resolve, then people drop out of, the, of becoming work seekers. And so it looks like unemployment is dropping, but in reality, there is structural unemployment, people that have just given up. Okay? And so we also have a situation with landlords who have given up. Empty places that remain empty permanently because no one knows what to do with them.
Now, I'm not saying this is the only problem that cities want to deal with when it comes to smart cities and open data, but attracting investment is part of that. You know, you want to attract those high-tech jobs? Where are they going to eat? Who's going to cut their hair? Who's going to do their accounts? Where's that going to come from? And if those things are not there, why would you move to that town? So we, as uh, Whitehawk, have been looking to build a new model around the idea that jobs don't exist in a, in a vacuum, okay? and that big businesses no longer create them. If we look at how information is being used by large organizations like your Tesco's and your Starbucks, it's to concentrate their markets. It's to close down shops, to refocus their investment on critical spaces because their margins are ever thinner and their, their fragility in rapidly changing markets means that they need to reduce, which is why a lot of shops become suddenly open and they're very large and they're the wrong use case. But those companies are spending three billion pounds a year on business intelligence which is a huge amount of money. And it's traditional business intelligence. It means they assemble information. How do they know how many shops are empty? They send real people out there to go and count and photograph. How do they know how many people are walking around a commercial space? There's not always sensors that look at pedestrians. They physically have people go there and sample. That data gets drawn back in. It produces a report. The research is sold. And because it is licensed, there isn't necessarily a way that small businesses can afford it because a report can cost you £20,000, which may be as much as your first year's rental. And you're not necessarily going to have access to it, and neither is the local council because of these uh, license restrictions. Even if you buy the report, you can't share it. So we've developed a, a product called Smart Streets, which is the idea of taking metadata and applying it to every single commercial space within an urban centre. And to take multiple data series, be they household income, local expenditure, we need retail rates, we need uh, uh, occupancy levels that comes from rates data because local authorities know who's in and who's not. And we bring that together to expose that for business uh, investors, people who want to start a small coffee shop, and are not willing to spend you know, 200,000 pounds on research looking for shops all across the UK in a major strategy. And this is something where local authorities can use the investment they're putting into smart streets to create a meaningful product, can leverage their data to bring business and expose opportunities in their own cities. And this also permits a city to get ahead of the curve, you know, that question of, Cool, you want to start a business. Right, here are 15 government departments you need to go and talk to. You need to get a permit for food. You need to get a permit for waste management. You need to get signage permits. These are all the things you're going to have to do, and these are the different departments you need to talk to. The city knows. And if you're looking at software that gives you an idea of what the business makeup should be in a similar way that a shopping center is managed, then you can get ahead of that curve, and you can start saying, right, we know that these things are going to be needed. Let's accelerate the process for investors so it reduces their investment in time and energy. Because the types of businesses you're attracting are small. You know, you've got 15 empty shops. You're going to bring rates into your city if you fill those uh, businesses. You're going to create 50, 60 jobs. But consequently, you're going to make your city more livable. And these are the sorts of, you know, mock-ups of, uh, of what that software looks like. The idea behind this is, is that you need to solve real problems. It needs to be tangible. A lot of cities are contemplating the idea of smart cities, of what we measure, of all the infinite number of things we can put sensors on. We can measure traffic. We can measure air quality. We can measure uh, electricity consumption. What's the thing that is going to make a meaningful difference to a city and to the people who live there? So that brings us to us. Please do come and see us during the break. Um, and uh, we look forward to speaking to you further about this. <laughs>